So recently I was checking out the Timu site again for graffiti supplies because a little while ago we found literally the shiniest liquid chrome paint I have ever seen in my life on there and it was actually one of the cheapest. We found a super cheap ink on there too that worked out way better than I thought it was going to. We even did a buff test. But this time on Timu, I came across something that wasn't there before. They now have new graffiti mobs on Timu, and these are actual graffiti mobs. What do I mean by that? Well, even in the product pictures, you can see them actually being demoed with graffiti tags and throwies, and they're in an actual style. So I'm hoping that these graffiti mobs are actually made for graffiti. I'm hoping they're more durable and hopefully comfortable to actually tag with and use. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing today because I called my contact up at Timo and said, hey, you guys have new mops on your site. Send us over those mops because we need to see what's going on with those. And that is why today we're going to be doing a full tagging test with every size of these new graffiti mops, seeing how durable they are and using them to get some tags up there. Because if they're good, they're a lot cheaper than any other graffiti mops you're gonna find because of the offer that Timo has for you guys today. So let's get these out and in front of us so we can see what we're dealing with. All right, so let's get this opened up. Okay, now check this stuff out, guys. It actually comes in like a, you know, a pack here. So first they have one of those really standard 10 millimeter mop here, 60 milliliters. It feels pretty squeezable to start out with, so that is a very good sign. You can see on the cap there, the, even the brand is listed. It's called Hollywit. I don't know much about it, which is why we're testing it out. This is the second kind of 10 millimeter size here. This one's 30 milliliters instead of 60. So half as much. That looks pretty big for 30 milliliters to me, but if they say so. Again, very, very squeezable. I'm liking it. The nibs here are kind of a translucent plastic, which I haven't seen nibs like that except for on crank markers. These ones look a little bit less durable if I had to guess. It's a cotton weave nib, it looks like. And they also have a couple 18 millimeter nibs here. Now this one was the one I was especially interested to get my hands on because it's 18 millimeter nib. It's a massive nib here, but it's only 30 milliliters. This is basically a pocket size carry, right? Plastic's a little harder on these for sure, but we'll see how they do. But I can honestly say I have never seen an 18 millimeter nib in like this exact shape. So this will be really interesting. They sent a bigger 18 millimeter nib over here as well. This one's 50 milliliters. And every single one of these comes with two mixing balls in them. So by the way, the reason I said that these mobs are cheaper than pretty much any other mobs in the world for you guys specifically right now is because when Timu sponsors a video here on the channel, like they're doing with this one, they like to provide you guys with some super steep discounts on their products that we're testing out. So if you download the Temu app from the first link in my description and search my personal code in their search bar, which this time is DNQ6552, I'm not trying to rhyme, it just happens. So if you download the Timu app and search that code, you can get $100 in free coupons, that's what they've said, and that's for all users. But if you're new to the Timu app, you can get 90% off the products that I have linked in the description, which are these mobs and some other markers that we picked up here today. So this pack of four, if you buy that and you get the 90% off, it's under $3 for four mobs. That's less than a buck each, guys. You can't get mobs cheaper than this. Timo offers free returns for up to 90 days as well as guaranteed delivery. So it's a pretty risk-free way to try out their app and get some super big discounts. So I'll show you what else we got here too. We've got some more pigments here. I'm still trying to put together a project where I do something pretty cool with these pigments. I keep telling you guys, you'll see it in the future. It's still the truth. <laughs> it's just taken a while. Got another pack here. This one is a lot more full. <laughs> 
This is kind of insane. <laughs> so same brand of markers here, but these ones are a bunch of chisel and maybe some bullet tips in here as well. These marker bodies are quite hard plastic. They feel very high quality. The thinner ones here, it looks like list the size of each of them, but they've got, instead of mixing balls, they've got like a singular cylindrical mixer in there, which you see with some skinnier ones. They're calling this first one a brush tip. It's a very hard brush though, so I don't know, but it looks like a very standard standard valve system. Something else here, the whole righty tighty lefty loosey thing does not apply to these markers. This is turn it right to loosen it, turn it left to tighten it. Got a fantastic looking bullet tip here. And you know what, these nice clear bodies give you exactly a good picture of what goes on in a valve system here. As soon as you compress a nib, it compresses the part right there, it compresses and that's what lets paint or ink flow into the marker there. This is a massive five millimeter bullet tip. Also a cool one to have here. We have a six millimeter chisel here. These six millimeter sizes. This is a very strange looking six millimeter. You don't usually see ones this thick and that's actually really cool because usually the downfall of the small chisel tips is that they're thin enough. They just bend and the nibs wear out really fast. So this is really encouraging actually. Got a minuscule 0.5 millimeter there. And then we've got the big boys here. Standard 15 millimeter nib, can't go wrong with one of those. Instead of a 15, we've got a 30, twice as wide. This one's got to be an eight. My bad, it's a 10 millimeter nib. So this pack here comes with every size chisel tip imaginable, including a 50 millimeter, right? So it's uh, it's really got everything. And at some point, maybe we'll try all this stuff out too. And by everything, I kind of mean everything because they even have a standard eight millimeter angled chisel tip in there. But again, if you are able to use the links in the description to get these packs, it makes them like insanely cheap. So right now we're gonna fill all four of these mobs up, I think with some paint and ink, or at least the two sizes, and I'll explain why we're doing some paint and ink while we start our tagging test. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by tagging up some names of subscribers who have asked for hit ups and patrons over in our Patreon crew. If you wanna check out the Patreon, you can. You get extra monthly content over there. It's especially good if you're trying to learn some of the techniques that the best graffiti artists in the world use to make awesome burner pieces. But one of the perks of the Patreon is you get your name permanently on our hit off list for when we do reviews like this. But we're gonna try out both of the 10 millimeter nib mops here because they're different sizes. I wanna see how each of them feels. And we're also gonna try the 18 millimeter nib mop here, the mini one, just cause I have a feeling it's a little bit harder to squeeze, but the body shape is the same. So we're not gonna do anything redundant by using the 50 milliliter one instead of the 30. We'll just get right to it. And after I do those tags, I'll be able to tell you guys if these are mops that I'm gonna actually legitimately continue to be using and if they're worth it for you guys to be testing out and trying to pick up for yourself. So as we get into this tagging test, we're first just starting off with a nice line comparison. If you guys aren't familiar with what a 10 millimeter versus an 18 millimeter nib looks like for mops, this is a really good comparison for you because a lot of people tend to think 10 millimeter is bigger than it is. On the opposite end of that, 18, it seems like a nice mid size, but I'd really refer to an 18 millimeter nib as a very large nib. It's not quite as hard to find places to write with it as a 20 or a 25, obviously, but you do you still have to be mindful of <laughs> how big the surface is that you're working on with these 18 millimeter nibs. A lot of the time I find writers will say, oh, 18's just fine, you can write anywhere with it. But those writers have names that are four letters long, three letters long, whereas a lot of the people that say 18 is huge, you know, I can't find anywhere to write with it. They've got like five, six letter tags that they use. So there's just something to keep in mind. That's just something I've noticed. But we're starting off right away with the 10 millimeter, 60 milliliter here. And this is a very classic shape 
for these mops again. I will still stand by that this is one of the most comfortable mop shapes you can get to write with, and this felt really comfortable. I would say 10 millimeter nibs for me feel a little bit small normally, but a 10 millimeter is a nice versatile size. And since we're talking about the nibs, I'll tell you right now, if you treat them the way they're supposed to be treated, you're gonna do okay. But I, there's one exception to that, which I'll talk about in a bit. But it felt really smooth, really squeezable, very, very controllable as well, specifically with this body type. Moving on to that beautiful formula we created there and put inside the 18 millimeter mini squeeze marker here. Now, this is a really unique one because like I said before, I have never actually seen an 18 millimeter nib mini mop with this exact body type. There's a couple graffiti brands out there that have kind of similar ones. But this alone, the length of it, you can write with it just like this, the way I'm holding it here, and it feels really nice and comfortable. Part of the reason it feels so comfortable, I think, is because the base is so wide. You can just you kind of glue your hand on there. So this style of mop, specifically with the 18 millimeter nib, I was actually very impressed with it. I didn't expect to be impressed with it. One of the reasons I didn't expect to be impressed with it is just because the plastic is hard. And I do think the reason that is, is because when you have those wider openings in your mop reservoirs, you have to make the plastic a little more firm to maintain structural integrity when these things are being squeezed on and that kind of thing. But even though it was a tougher plastic, when you write with it like this, you feel like you have a pretty good level of control with it. And that's really what I wasn't expecting about this 18 millimeter. You can tell all already just with a bit of use here you are getting that little indent and it's molding to the shape of my hand or the way that I am tagging with the marker and that is kind of what you want because with this being a little bit thinner on one axis than the other it is going to promote that squeezability and therefore a bit more control for you as well but I just want to say with all the kind of blue and silver tags that we're doing there I don't really want to talk about the formula I made too much just because the formula did not come in these mops I just concocted them up creating different different formulae is something I've always kind of enjoyed. I tried to keep the 18 millimeter tags to a lot of the four or five letter ones there. Just because that's honestly where I think this mop kind of shines. Something to consider, if you are a graffiti artist, graffiti writer, and your name is four letters long, you might want to pick one of these up. I know that's a weird reasoning, but <laughs> Honestly, it feels like it really does well when you're doing this kind of size tag, very bold, simplistic lettering. I didn't think I'd have very many good things to say about this just due to how hard the plastic is, but it's already loosening up a little bit. other 10 millimeter nib here. I expected this to feel really, really good because it is super squeezable. That being said, it had some issues and there's two reasons it had some issues. One is my fault, the other is not. The formula that I filled this up with, I didn't mix it well enough. It was supposed to be like a gold and you can't really see the gold in there. I don't think the particulate was mixed quite enough, but it was a gold mop paint that we put in there. And the main issue besides the opacity is the more you squeeze, nothing happened. And the only explanation I can see for that is that there's an issue with the nib. And don't just take my word for it. Further evidence I have towards that too is it's not just that I couldn't, no matter how hard I squeezed, I couldn't get more drips or anything out of it. It was that eventually I started to see the nib was coming off of the mop reservoir by itself. And that only happens when you squeeze and you're building up pressure, which means that paint and pressure cannot make its way out of the nib and instead it just has to kind of blow the nib off of it. So, you know, if you've ever seen those videos where someone goes up to a wall, they're ready to do a nice juicy tag and then it just, the nib comes off and they're covered in paint. That's why, it's because their nib has a flow issue. And this does have that. And by the way, whenever you do see that, I recommend changing your nibs out immediately because the worst thing you can do is forget that this mop wasn't writing so well, put it away wherever you store your mops. Next time you go to use it, you've forgotten. And 10 minutes later, you're covered in paint. So I might even mark this and just say, change nib or something like that on a sticky note. That's what I tend to do. A little pro tip with skis for you there.
And as we get into the tags on wood, I will talk about the nib a little bit. We're using our finished wood surface there and it's just got a bit of roughness to it and these nibs didn't really have any problem at all with that, which is a relief. They shouldn't have any problem with that because the roughness of our wood surface is not any more rough than even a lot of like smooth metals that are outdoor and have an unfinished paint on them. But yeah, we were throwing all our patrons' names up there, or a few of them, and a couple other names there, and the nibs are holding up just fine. As far as the nibs go on the 18 millimeter, I actually do have to conclude something a little bit different. And it's just because these are so flat. Like, the wider the nib, the more it flattens out. So you do have to watch out for that. And that's one of the reasons I'm an advocate for mohair nibs that have the longer hair on them. That longer hair helps these nibs maintain a bit more of that three-dimensionality that I really like. But these ones just got really flat really fast. And when you're working with cotton nibs that aren't necessarily all that strong, the larger the nib, sometimes it just stretches that cotton out. It makes it a little bit weaker. You really have to maintain the completely flat nib on the surface to get that full 18 millimeter. So it does feel at times like you're using a bit of a smaller nib than an 18. But again, that's not necessarily something bad it's just a personal preference and some people might enjoy that I'm not one of those people something else with the nib that uh, kind of goes towards what I'm saying as well is I actually felt and you can see that too there's a lot of drips in those tags part of that is because I used a thin marker paint mixed with an ink to create this formula but I do think that part of that was just because the cotton on this nib is a little bit thinner it's stretched out a little more and because of that you're getting less flow regulation as the paint comes out hence more drips I'm kind of making an educated guess on that one but you know what that's what we've done on the channel for the last decade, isn't it? So, I don't know. Trust me or don't. Why did I fill these with a paint and an ink? You know what? It didn't really work out all that well, but the reason I tend to put paints and inks into mops like this is because inks tend to not dry out as fast. So if you're like me and you have lots of different mops because you're just a graph head and you love having a lot of mops, you don't necessarily use each one each week. You can have a few mops that sit in your stash for you know a month, two months, even longer. And if there's just paint on that nib, it's gonna dry out. Whereas if you throw some paint mixed with some ink in there, the ink that's in there can saturate the nib and it helps it not dry out. That's the only reason we did that. We didn't really get the formulation quite right on the orange or the gold with it so you can't really even tell there's an ink in those ones so I do want to say they are comfortable they are squeezable are they carryable that's the last thing here well I mean look at this guy of course he's carryable I do appreciate that these Hollywood mops come in the mop body styles that they do because the only one that's not super carryable is this but it's not any less carryable than any other 60 milliliter mop that's in this style right so you can come to your own conclusion of if you like having to have a bag with you for this or if you like just jamming these in your pocket I don't know but I do think I have enough evidence now to actually tell you you know am I gonna keep using these should you pick these up Here are the mops, right? I'll tell you something, I kind of have a little checklist of what I look out for when I'm reviewing mops, and it's something that you guys might be able to utilize too to figure out if a mop is worth it to you. The first thing is, how do the nibs work? I would say the, the durability of the nibs is fine. It's about as good as you're gonna get with a cotton nib. The one here obviously did have a bit of flow issues, which isn't ideal. It's hard to say if this was just a dud or what, but we know one of the two worked for the 10 millimeter ones. It's very rare to have anything bigger than the 10 millimeter have a pressure issue like that or a valve actuation issue the second thing are they comfortable and squeezable yes and yes even the ones with the harder plastic i didn't expect to enjoy using and i did lastly are they carryable for the most part yes for these guys you know it's pretty good and because you know i'm always on a budget probably most graffiti writers are and i can't say anything other than the truth about these you can get these for cheaper than 
just about any other mobs on the face of the planet, right? If you're able to use the link in the description to download the Timu app, Timu says they'll give you a $100 coupon bundle. If you click specifically on the product links, you can get them for 90% off. You have four mobs for less than $3 here. That's unbeatable, right? Like I said, these are the cheapest you can get. And you know what? Whether you're a new app user or not, the heavy staining ink that we tested out and did a full buff test and tag test with last time is also one of the cheapest you can get. So you can see the full buff test and tagging test in the video right now on screen. It sure surprised the hell out of me. Thank you to all the patrons in the Patreon crew. I'll see you over there. Peace.